Greetings and welcome back to room 303 in our chats with Emily as we are calling our readings through the poetry of Emily Dickinson. We're using the Johnson edition and his numbering system. We are to poem 156, You Love Me, You Are Sure. Now, in many ways, we're back to poem 51. That is to say the referencing to Dolly, which is, of course, Emily's pet name for Sue, Susan Gilbert. Just to remind Susan Gilbert, who, of course, uh, be a close friend, if not lover, of Emily's, who will then marry Emily's brother, and Emily will send 275 poems at least to Sue. And so that makes this poem a fascinating poem to study on a number of counts. I think the insecurities of Emily will sometimes come out in a poem like this one, who is in need of reassurance, we might say. Now our assumptions are that you've been following our stuff at LearnStrong.net, down that left-hand side again, Chats with Emily, our playlist. I'm hopeful that you've already worked through our set of introductory comments where we talk about the relationship with Sue and Emily and others, of course. And I'm hopeful that you've already read the preceding 155 poems. I mentioned that we're back now to poem 51. Uh, we just finished with poem 155, uh, The Murmur of a Bee. Now, as I said, there's a lot of debate among scholars about the relationship between Emily and Sue. The um, scholar Judith Farr has suggested that Sue's stings, um, in some ways, may have come in part from her dread of the immense responsibility of mothering, which Emily as a child was seeking to place upon her in their dynamic between the two. I think it's a fascinating read, way to read a poem like this. And biographers have commented at length about how profound it was that Emily, uh, can we say lost? Certainly the relationship between Sue and Emily changed as Sue then uh, married uh, Emily's brother. Let's just enjoy the poem. I'm interested in the tone. I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave it to you guys ultimately to decide what is the tone that is being suggested here. You love me, you are sure. I shall not fear mistake, I shall not cheated wake some grinning morn to find the sunrise left in orchards unbereft and dolly gone. I need not start, you're sure, that night will never be when frightened home to thee I run to find the windows dark and no more Dolly, Mark, quite none? Be sure, you're sure, you know. I'll bear it better now if you'll just tell me so than when a little dull balm groan over this pain of mine, you sting again. Now at the end of this lecture, we're gonna look at a couple of other poems, 446 and 1401, that will play a similar kind of game but just to remind, at poem 92, uh, we, uh, she, she wrote it, and we studied this already, my friend must be a bird because it flies, mortal my friend must be because it dies, barbs has it, like a bee. Ah, curious friend, thou puzzlest me. And of course, I mean, we, we can begin to join some of these poems, these Sue poems as we call them together. Notice, she begins with, you love me. She'll call her Dolly, never mention her as Sue or Susan. You love me, you're sure. Notice the exclam the, uh, the, the uh, question mark comes down further, or, as in, you are sure. Now, again, this, the tone of this seems to be Emily actually asking, are you sure about the way you tell me that you love me? I shall not fear mistake, I shall not Notice it's italicized, cheated, wake, some grinning more. Again, the use of the word grinning. For Emily, so much hangs on a word, right? And here it is, grinning. If in an earlier poem, 155, it was sneering, now it's grinning, one grinning one, to find the sunrise left, right? And orchards unbereft, and Dolly gone. Of course, poem 51, 158, both playing this game of Dolly that here is mentioned twice. Then a break, and then I need not start, as in be afraid. You're sure, notice we go from you are sure to you're sure. That night will never be when frightened, we're back to the second line with fear, home to thee I run to find, and Emily's use of the word home I think is fascinating, we commented it, it is the last word on a poem 154. Home to thee I run to find the windows dark and no more dolly. Mark, 
as in pay attention. Quite none? Question mark. Now I think the question mark here is one of the most significant in punctuation of any of the poems we've studied thus far. Then from all of that, it's be sure, right? Be sure you're sure. It's a fact, my Emily group love this line, be sure you're sure. Because to what degree can we ever be totally sure about the relationships that we have with other people? Be sure you're sure, and then the dash, and then you know, and then the dash. And then she says it, I'll bear it better now if you'll just tell me so than when a little dull balm groan over this pain of mine. You sting again. Now, of course, poem 92, as we, as we already looked at it, Barb's has it like a bee, speaking, of course, of, of Sue, right? To that degree, what exactly is it that's happening in 2A? Well, I think it's obvious that it's hard to be in doubt about the fidelity of friendships. At 2B, the tone has a tone of uncertainty. My Emily group actually reads this poem as desperate. And I think that there's a fair way to read this. It's like there's a certain panic almost in these lines. In terms of 3A, I'd like to take you to two poems that we will study later. I want to start with first poem 446. It's, it runs like this. I showed her heights she never saw. Wouldst climb? I said. She said, not so. With me? I said, with me? I showed her secrets, morning's nest, the rope the knights were put across. And now, wouldst have me for a guest? She could not find her yes. And then I break my life. And lo, a light for her did solemn glow, the larger as her face withdrew. And could she further? No. Um, a brilliant poem, and when we hit it, we'll come back to poem 156. The other poem is 1401, and it reads like this. To own a Susan of my own is of itself a bliss. Whatever realm I forfeit, Lord, continue me in this. Well, finally at 3B, what's a time that you worried about the fidelity of a friend, if not a lover? How is reading Emily helping you to cope with that situation? Thank you.